Okay, now let's look at multiple force members. Okay, now we've just looked at two force members. Simplest case, now very easy. Now, what if a member is subject to three, four, or five or more forces? Now what happens to the internal forces? Well, let's look at this example. You now this structure right here. Now this structure consists of a lot of you know members. This little straight member AD, okay, and then it's uh, connected to this other link right here, this other ridge body CF, and then there's this other piece BE, okay, attached to it this way. And they're all pin connected, okay. And this AD member is uh, attached to the ground, and also there's a cable, you got a little rope pulling okay, from this D, okay. Um, to the ground, uh, joint, uh, joint G. And also at this end, uh, we have a little weight and it's hanging okay, from this point F. Okay, slightly more complicated. Now this whole thing is in equilibrium. It's not moving. Okay, so static condition. Now, I'd like you to find what's going on at this red cross right here, inside of this AD member, okay, right here, inside. So, in other words, I like, I like you to find the internal forces right here in this position. Okay, let's look at the free body diagram of AD member, right? Since this point, okay, this point of interest is part of this AD member. So let's just draw it. So free body diagram of AD. Well, what you do is you isolate AD out of this entire you know, connection, right? So <coughs> free it up. Just draw AD, and then draw all the forces acting on AD. Okay, so you shouldn't have any trouble drawing that. Okay, well, let's look at what uh, what does AD is subject to, right? So let's just, at this point A, well, we have reaction force from the ground, right? This is a support. So and since since this is attached to the ground, right? So you have a two-dimensional constraint, right? So so this constraint will resist, okay, um, this, this, uh, this member AD, right, from moving, okay, in either horizontal or vertical direction, okay. So, this resistance, okay, let me draw, like, this way, okay. So, I'm going to call it FAY component, FAX component, right. So, these two are the reaction forces from the ground. Let's say what else? Well, we have this B right here, okay? This point B is part of this BE member, right? So at this this point B, there will be okay, a reaction force, okay? Coming from this BE. So, uh, I'm going to draw it right here. Okay, so that's B. But what's the direction of that force, that reaction force? Well, Recognize that the BE member is a two-force two member. And being a two-force member means that there has to be a force coming out of each end of the BE member. And they have to be directed along the BE direction. Okay? Which means that this force, the reaction force from this BE member, okay, on this AD member at this point, and this is point B right here, the force is exactly oriented along the BE direction. Okay. So I'm going to draw it like this way. Now direction I don't know exactly, so what it points down or points up, okay? But if you don't know it, just assume it. And call it FB. Okay, what else? I can like, I just call it FBE. How about that? Right? Just to be consistent with my uh, force convention naming. Okay? Just to signify that this, this force 
is pointing along the BE direction. Okay, <coughs> what else? I have the C right here. Uh, somewhere here. Okay. Now this pin, C, naturally we have reaction force or reaction forces, right? Now, how many components, how many forces are at C? Yeah, is it just like this, this B, this FBE right here? Simple as that. Well, you can look at the CF member now. Now, CF member is not a two-force member. You have this force right here at C. You have this other force at E. And you have this other force, F. So, CF is subject to three forces. Okay? So, the direction, the exact direction of this force, FC, you don't quite know just yet. Okay? So, we could actually, alternatively, draw two components. F, CF, X component, and F, C, F, Y component. Okay? Let's draw this component. X and Y component. Okay? But the magnitude, I don't know. Okay? But, we do know that there are two components. Of the reaction force coming from this member C F acting at this point C. Okay. Next, I have well the last point. Okay, this D right here at the top. Right, I have this rope that is pulling from it. So this direction I know. Right, so I'm going to just call it T for tension. Okay. And you do know that it's pulling, right? So it's going down that way. So that's it. So this is the free body diagram for member A D. Okay? So it one, two, three, four, five, six forces. It's a six force member. Okay? Now I'm interested in looking at the internal force. Well, somewhere between C and D, uh, like here. Okay. So I'm going to do a cut point, cut through C and D. Okay, I call this cut plane, cut plane J. Okay. So what's going on at this position? Okay, inside this member, okay. along cut plane J. So just like what we did for the two force member before. Now I have cut through this, this cut plane J, okay? which means that now I get two sections, section AJ and section JD. Okay? Which one to analyze first? Well, take a pick. I like to start with the simpler one, okay? JD. The smaller piece, simpler. Let's start with that. So let's look at the free body diagram of section JD. Okay, let's see what it looks like. So draw JD. and draw all the forces acting on this little section JD. Okay? So, <coughs> uh, let's call this J right here now, right? Alright, so you do know right away that at D we have this tension force coming down this way. Okay? That's easy. Now, what else? Since this is a free body diagram for JD section, right? All these other guys don't appear here at all now. Okay? Now what else do we have? Well, there's nothing between J and D. Okay? But instead, what we have here is something at J. Okay? Now J okay, is a cut plane, right? So we cut through this, this member. To AD. Right? So there has to be something going on here at J 
so that this section JD can be in equilibrium. Okay? Which means that there has to be something so that this tension force T is cancelled out. Okay? Just so that in the end, this piece, this little section JD, is in equilibrium. Hey, that's nothing new. Okay? Equilibrium, well, just write down the equilibrium conditions. Right? And you do know that we have three conditions. Sum of forces x equals zero, sum of forces y equals zero, and since this is a rigid body, you have sum of moment equals zero. Moment about any point. Moment about j or d or any point doesn't matter. Okay? So some moment equals zero. So knowing this, right, these three equations must be satisfied in order for this piece, this little section, to be in equilibrium. There has to be, therefore, two forces at J. I call it F, J, Y, how about that? F, J, X components. Okay? So, these two guys will counter this T, this tension force. Okay? Just so that this piece would not have any translation. Okay? It would not move to the right or left or up or down. Okay? But what about rotation? Since this is a rigid body, this tension T would tend to create a rotation, right? So there has to be something else that resists this rotational effect. That's where this comes in. Right? Some moment it has to be zero. So if I have a moment about J, okay? So this tension T would tend to create, what is it? A counterclockwise moment about J. So we have to have a counter moment, right? To counter the moment created by this tension T, which is exactly this. I'm called M. Okay. And that's it. These three guys, FJX, FJY, and M, are the internal forces at this J right here. Okay? Internal to this A D member. Okay? However, when we look at this J D section, these three guys now have become external. External to J D. Okay? But they're internal to A D. Okay? That's why they don't appear in this AD free body diagram, but instead they appear here. Okay? So, these three guys are the internal, okay, uh, internal forces and moment to this AD member. Next thing is just figure out the magnitude of each. That's all. Okay? Now, <coughs> these three have special uh, names to it. Okay. This FJX, this is going this way, going sideways, or perpendicular to the direction of this, this JD or AD direction. We call it shear force. And the textbook calls it V. Okay, V for shear force. This FJY, since it's axial, okay, axial along the axial direction of AD, okay, called axial force. Sometimes also referred to as normal force. Okay, textbook calls it N for normal force. This moment, M, it's actually a couple moments. 
Okay, you can look at it as a couple moments, right? 